Hey, what's up? I'm back. I told you I'd be having muesli. There's no way under heaven that I'm gonna let myself go weak and fall apart just because I'm suffering, you know what I mean? Just because I need to lose weight, die, sugar, uh uh. Delicious. Second part. In the previous part, I'm having that and some fruit. If I, uh, mm, 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 it will at least leave room for. You see, the sun has set now. It'll make me eat less dinner. Yeah. But I can't let myself exercise with barely any food. Mm, 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 mm. This guy at Vits, right, that was pursuing me. Please go check out the previous part, right, to understand what we're talking about, to gauge your bearings and stuff like that. I was talking about the fact that men insist on respect and loyalty more than they do on reciprocated love from a woman. And uh, Christ is the one that uproots out of them once they turn their lives over to Jesus. The desire for just loyalty and respect without a woman really being truly happy to a point of pursuing her violently without really truly doting over her but just trying to lord it over her with an iron fist to make her love you make her want be with you not so much love you because they trust that women are highly unlikely gonna cheat in an ecosystem so just don't go out on me and disrespect me as a man and have other men laugh at me in these streets but you don't gotta love me whoa okay very well this guy when i was at vitz would pursue like he the first day that he met me i wasn't even responding to him i was telling him to leave me alone uh and he was following me around and he'd be like so what subjects do you do what what, what are you studying and i wouldn't even tell him because i wasn't trying to linger him on a conversation for crying out loud right mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's really hard to eat muesli while talking but anyway i was trying to get him over to apumegim this guy right and then he went and tabulated all of his statistics all up in my grill i'm like he's like what are you studying i'm like leave me alone like it doesn't matter just pumagim and he was like well i am doing a b in, a bsc in financial mathematics i could take care of you one day i'm gonna make a whole bunch of money i'm gonna be rich don't you see uh, I'm in third year and next year I've already been accepted into honors I'm doing well and I'm gonna get my first job next year interning at a company I'm here on scholarship meaning that I did so well that my parents money has been saved somebody else is paying for my fees a company is paying for my fees so you're basically turning down right now somebody that that's gonna take good care of you you're still in first year right well I'm gonna be doing honors next year while working I'll pay for everything. I'll give you lunch money. I'll give you whatever you need. Like your parents can relax. They can save money. If you let me come in, they can save money. They don't have to give you taxi fare. They don't have to give you anything. Put you on top of that next year as soon as I'm working. I'm going to get a car so I'll drive you home. You won't need to. Yo, Yazi, the stats, like this guy was just throwing stats all up in my grill. He even told me that he, he, he can show me his academic transcript if I don't believe him. Uh, in other words, basically the fact that he's not just a financial mathematics student, but one that a student, but one that is doing really well. As in Opasagadi 80, Gadi 90. And so proper, I have no business rejecting him. As he, this Oki, I could not for the love of me believe that he was trying to get me to be with him based on what he was throwing around statistically. I could not believe that men like that actually exist. Like guys that will shell at you literally throwing money all up in your grill without actually trying to, you know, love you, without actually trying to con like convince you that they are lovable. I, I don't know, like you know, try to spark interest in you for them that is genuine. I, I, for the life of me, I couldn't believe it. This guy's out there telling me that he's in third year. Next year he's doing honors, he's gonna graduate almost practically magna cum laude and all i could think was how is such a genius such an intelligent man so dumb <laughs> how is such a genius so dumb like proper why haven't you gotten basic things like you are emotionally and spiritually very immature how under heaven are you maybe it yes, is that guy Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe when he was growing up, he was so re rejected <laughs> by women <laughs> that when he entered into Vitz on scholarship, the, the, the little girls in his town were like, Woo! 
what type of hoya jersey? I don't know. Like, cause he, he like he literally whipped out a whole marketing plan, a whole like financial model, showing me even like net present values and everything about of the fact that fine, this little project that you're looking at right now might might be nothing, right? It might be nothing today. But only look at the future. Forecasted five years and I'm going to be rolling in dough, baby. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll give him that name. <laughs> he was like the beginning of a concept in corporate. Not even so much of a project. Before a project is considered viable to take on. You know there are all different kinds of financial exercises that must be performed to gauge the feasibility financially of this project. How much is it gonna cost? How much do we foresee it's gonna make? And so based vele vele on certain projections, you then either run with it or don't. Yeah, this dude done hooked up a hard knock, conceptual, uh, a whole substantiation, or what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, like, you know, when you, when you want to, one minute, when you wanna make a case for taking on a project and you do all different kinds of mathematical gymnastics, to the project sponsor to convince him to finance the project <laughs> that dude was doing that <laughs> to a woman no that was never pulled by the no sketch alert it's never been me he was making that case to a woman that by then had never dated a guy that had his own apartment, had never dated a guy that had his own, his own car, had never dated a guy that even had a driver's license, had never dated a guy, betcha at her, gave her money. I, yeah, I had never been that girl. I'd never been in the, you know, the whole experience of passenger seat. I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know it. Hambanyavur. <laughs> I've never known that. I'm a chocolate girl. I'm a chocolate by any guy. I've never sat in the passenger seat of a guy's car. I promise you right now, I have never done that before I got my own car. All the guys that I dated prior to me getting my own car did not have cars. I taught my ex-boyfriend how to drive. And only once he got his own car did I then sit in the passenger seat of his car. But as a woman that had her own car. So long story short, I've never been a gold digger. I've never been the kind of woman to pass up a guy because I get a money. I've, I've always, like when I was growing up, I used to combat with my boyfriend. I used to like sneak in to his house because he didn't have his own apartment. Like proper, well into my 20s. Well into my 20s. Even when I was old enough. Cause you know like teenage girls out here be getting judged for rolling around with guys that drive cars Like even when I was old enough to be with a guy that drove a car I've never been with one Like my ex-boyfriend of five years was the one that I taught how to drive So before then Everybody Was too serious Everybody was walking, everybody was comparing every Everybody, I mean remember before I got my car there was a time when I was in a taxi with my ex-boyfriend Sick, I was vomiting and I was lying on his lap, freaking out that the taxi driver is going to kick us out because I'm busy, I'm sick. Kagula, I was vomiting, and I remember sitting in the before when he was the one combering, while I was sitting on the pavement on the floor, unable to stand up straight. The way no husna karaga thing, umuntu me mega kibela ma taxi ne medi ekula. Guys, I've never been a passenger. Drinking some sweet alcohol. I've never been that girl. <laughs> but this Oki didn't know that, alright? So a guy could never ever pursue me with money. I always expected a guy to actually put his game on. Like, charm the living dealers out of me for crying out loud. Let me find you swaggerfied. Let me find you cute for crying out loud. Let me think you got game. Let me think you got skill. Let me think what cars are. Hey man, kill can cars are booty. Like you better casarize me. You better say things. I'll give you an example. What made me um fall for my ex boyfriend, right? The the one over five years, how I ended up dating him. He had 
about so we went to lunch me and my girls dinner more like dinner go news cafe yako santon mm -hmm. mm -hmm. actually the story with my ex is the perfect one to use remember earlier i said that um there's a difference between a guy that you don't like back when he initially pursues you but then he does something that changes your mind and you're like okay fine i'll roll with you type thing so he changes your mind he makes you see that yo i can roll with that versus a guy he disgusts you he grosses you out but then he insists on being with you because he can pay your way two different things my ex-boyfriend was the was the latter who initially but then he convinced me and so i was like okay i'll roll with that what type thing i met him i was at the new we were my girls and i a whole bunch of us in a local news cafe having dinner prior to the days of every last one of us having a vehicle uh so we were getting picked up my 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 cousin her boyfriend was picking us up me and my cousin and then the rest of them were getting picked up by some other guys right mm, but it was like a girls night out type thing and my cousin's boyfriend rocked up with my would-be boyfriend all right at the time i was dating some other guy some closet homosexual i will put that out there i was not in love with the closet the homosexual he was in the closet in the west way he was more like my friend than my boyfriend but we used to yeah whatever again stories is in for another day you know when you just want to be in a relationship and you let a guy into like shelly i bet you i'm coming even though i'm suspect anyway whatever yeah i was with a guy like that so i knew that i needed to get out at some point but he was keeping me company i wasn't bored with him i didn't hate him he was just i was not in love yeah and he was also poverty stricken one of those houses that don't have a bathroom and a toilet inside you gotta go use the ladies you gotta go and pee outside that guy used to live for room so this pursuit by but right now trying to use that to convince me it's like i've never been that girl if living in a house ailing all gentrified and in the suburbs i could date a dude of for room it means even today these guys don't stand a chance i've never been that girl allow me to just put that out there right i've never like i don't know maybe it's genetic angazi but some women are just not wired and they fell out to sniff out after money there are women who actually are chasing after a pipe dream they actually want love they are those naive randos that can live in a shack and love a man and i used to be like that i used to be like that so i like proud but just because i started making money and i was successful does not mean that i suddenly stopped expecting love and thanks to being like that i was never subjugated to the tyranny of dating guys that were such prolific players players that i did not know whether i was coming or going i only heard horror stories in the wilderness about such women but i was never among those girls i've never dated a guy that was all over the show to a point where i was in danger except for one dude and even that one dude the only reason i even ended up dating him was because i was playing around with him knowing that he's a player and then i mistakenly fell in love and so i stayed with him but not for two i i love he pulled one stunt and i eventually got out of that but otherwise i've yeah nah yeah self also didn't have a car he was also living at home with his parents he was just really hella charming and so he prospered to like win me over type thing but i guess i've never been given a salary and allowance by a guy ever like it's just this guy from the u.s was the first guy in my life ever i promise you and i was already 37 37 it took me getting to the age of 37 guys please respect can we just do that guys as in Anyway, I don't want to so my ex, ne? Before how we met, how I ended up dating him, comes to my ex, my 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 um my cousin's boyfriend, comes to pick us up at the news cafe. All right. Hmm. My cousin's boyfriend comes to pick us up at the news cafe. This lipstick is getting all over my hands. Comes to pick us up at the news cafe, but he comes with this guy, with my ex boyfriend. Get him binge. I get their friends type establishment thing and they were already somewhere where meziwa angazi whatever it was all happening it was happening somewhere these gen z's call it lit it was lit they came from somewhere where it was lit so he came with one of his boys and one of his boys was the boy that would end up being my my man type thing right uh, on some carpet i gotta go pick up my girl from wherever 
I gotta go pick up my girl from Santon. She's having dinner with her girls. So this guy's like, okay, shop. My ex is like, okay, shop. So he accompanies my ex's, my, my cousin's boyfriend to come and pick up his girlfriend. And while well, I'm traveling in the same vehicle with them, right? And initially, before they it wasn't just a pickup they actually ended they chilled with us for a minute like the the ladies he, they found us there and they were like ladies hi how's it going what's going on and they picked food off our plates and they sat down by the papel right uh and and so basically he was at some point around an entourage of something like 10 or 11 women like 11 women were at that round table having dinner at the news cafe and my ex was looking at me the whole time and that i felt flattered by that but i was like i don't like him type thing he was looking at me and i was like whoa out of all of these fly ladies these fly mommies you've chosen me whoa how special <laughs> he was eyeing me he was eyeing me lo and behold when it's time now to go home he then also got a surprise shock of his life that oh she's coming in the car with us because she's the cousin of my um my boys right so i go in the car and because he's a decent gentleman my cousin was one of those passenger seat so she was in the passenger seat of her man's car and so therefore this guy had to move back Komorahu, being decent and sit at the back with me because now Mary was here so you don't get to sit in front and make the two girls sit at the back so he sat at the back seat with me music is pumping random whatever lackluster conversation is being had he introduces me to himself look i had already met him at the news cafe type thing but then he starts to like spark up like conversation with me as i'm sitting back there you know and i, I I'm, I'm i'm humoring him because you know it's rude not to type thing and i'm like yeah i know huh? yeah i know i work at this um thing i work at at, at telly show mm -mm, where was i at the time netbank i work at netbank in bromfontein uh type thing at, at the call center there he's like oh no way get out i also work at liberty life it's like the same neighborhood type thing i was like oh really oh my my uncle works there who's your uncle abc oh no snap i know your uncle your uncle you mean her dad i'm like yeah my uncle indeed my cousin's dad i'm like yeah her dad works at liberty life and my family has got like a whole history at liberty life like we've you know every one of us has worked there before we end up somewhere else type thing mm. so it's like a family business now you know and we laugh on like, ho, ho, ho. so how long you've been working at liberty life now this long this long and you at netbank now this long ah oh, it's weird that we haven't seen each other around but anyway maybe we'll start seeing each other around i was like ha 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 funny type thing anyway so we were able to spark up a conversation mm -hmm. and then he tells me that he um he stays in and then and, 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 and what's that neighborhood that my ex state and yeah that neighborhood he's like i live in this particular neighborhood i'm like oh so where did you go to high school then i realized that he lived in a neighborhood in the south of johannesburg and that's where i grew up and that's also where i went to school so the first automatic question that came to the top of my mind was what school do you go to what high school did you go to if at all you live in this neighborhood did you perhaps go to a, a high school in the in the hood in the vicinity and um and he's like yeah i went to mondial high I was like, get out of town. Do you know ABC, D, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, uh, hashtag squiggly, uh, uh, the next door neighbor minus cousin twice removed and whatnot from that other street like proper. I was naming people. <laughs> I didn't go to Mondeor. <laughs> I didn't go to Mondeor, but I, I knew a lot of people who did. Like I knew my, my, my friends from primary school who went to Mondeor. I was like, do you know nobody? Do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know <laughs> and he was like, well, from where? What does she look like? Yeah, maybe. But then he didn't know all of them because my ex was four years older than me. So when we were in grade eight, he was in matric. So he didn't really know all of my girls. But I was like, do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know that? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And then, and then, of course, after asking him what high school he went to, he was like, I knew what high school did you go to? And I'm like, I went to Sir John Adamson. Oh, no, no, please, speech lag, don't mess with me. I like my stories. I've got speech lag challenges right now. Mm. So after asking him what school he went to, he then is like, where did you go to school? I'm like, I went to, to, to Sir John Adamson. He's like, oh, whoa, no, so, wow, okay, wow, that's interesting. From what year I told him that, that, that that's when I told him my age. I was like, in grade eight, from 1980, uh, from 1998 until 2002 he was like oh okay 
um, I would have been in matric when you first started out. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, do you know the, my sister? Uh, and he knew my sister, my older sister. I was like, do you know my sister? He's like, yeah, I know your sister. Also, you're the, this girl. They say my sister's name is Pinky. Also, your Pinky's younger sister. I didn't even know Pinky had a sister. We used to party together and whatnot. I was like, yeah, I'm Pinky's sister. Mm, type thing. He's like, oh, whoa, what a small world. So we basically hit it off in terms of a conversation, but I still didn't like him because I thought there was something about him that was, I will come to explain to you later when I tell you what my cousin said. Something about him was off. And that was the reason why Mara, he was kind. He was very sweet. He was a nice dude. We had a conversation. We had a lot in common. We grew up in the same more or less neighborhood, knew more or less the same people type thing. Uh, he had, had never crossed paths for whatever reason when we were on the come up. But one of the biggest reasons I imagine we never crossed paths was likely because Nikisa Pape, Kos Golonga, I wasn't all over the show. Nikisa spreading my, 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 my body around all of the south of Johannesburg to a point where I would be known, right? I was a relatively kept together kid, Nikile in a bunch type thing. So Nikisa Pape, Nikisa Stratmate, that's yeah. So he wouldn't know me. Otherwise, he might have known me. My cousin, however, did know him. Because she was heavy. She was active. She was all over. She remembers him from back in the day. My cousin Yana had block on a churina. So now I'm going to save. Hey. Mmm. 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 They then got into a fight at some party. I was like, they will go there to do something. I can't even write something. Were they picking up a guy or what? And first, Khwadzwa, my cousin's boyfriend. To go and deal with this fight at some complex where some kids we were all kids i guess we're having a brawl and then my cousin and i were like hey but these guys are having a fight what's going on and then my ex um came well he wasn't at the time my boyfriend the guy that would ultimately be my boyfriend comes back and he's like hey they're about to break out into a fight and i'm not interested and i was like oh so at least you're not violent mm. anyway whatever right fine he gets dropped off at home my ex right first because we're now in his neighborhood where the fight was happening was in his neighborhood uh he gets dropped off Kohabona. we drop him off and then my cousin's boyfriend takes me home and then the two of them go back to wherever they were going i was living in this herd mm, type establishment thing next day my cousin calls me on some girl you don't have to know that and now i'm talking girl you loves you girl i'm kidding okay there was no song but like she calls me she's like girl Let's say my ex's name was Cabello. She's like, girl, Cabello is feeling you. Cabello likes you. He, he has a crush on you. He thinks you, you're the cutest, you're the baddest. I'm like, oh, really? I could tell. But I'm not interested in him because something about him looks criminal. Like, that's what I told my friend, my cousin. I was like, 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 Bottom is Gensery. Okay. Mm -mm. And like something about this guy's Gensery. And uh, and she's like, yeah, I agree. Something about him is Gensery. But before I, I I mentioned that I felt like something about him was a little bit of a like he had a criminal something just gave off dishonest. Okay. It was my gut feeling. Uh before she said that, before I said that, and she agreed with me. She was like, if she was like, if I was not with my man, I'd date him. So my cousin Loki sort of kind of influenced me to look at him differently. She was like, if, if I was with him, and so if I was not with my man, I would date him type thing. So I was like, mm, that's your choice. I don't want to be with a guy that's kind of gintery type thing. Anyway, I let her go. Uh, sorry, he, she relayed the message back to him. And he was like, oh snap. Well, that kind of sucks. But anyway, uh, let's see. Come on. Like, yeah, I told him that I have a boyfriend, right? I told my cousin to tell him that I have a boyfriend. My cousin knew I had a boyfriend. That was a closet homosexual. But anyway, uh, that was not a real excuse because I wanted to leave that guy for somebody else due to the fact that he was obviously gay. Like, it was so clear. Uh, anyway, whatever. Mm. But I used him as an excuse. And then this guy uh, told my cousin, uh, when, when my cousin told him that I've got a boyfriend, he was like, well, he was like, tell your cousin to give me a chance to convince her to leave him for me. And when my cousin brought back that message, I was so flattered, guys. Like, <laughs> I was so flattered. I got so giddy. My goodness. I was like, what? This guy wants me to, to he, he wants to contact me so he can convince me to dump 
my my boyfriend. What I could convince that guy. What happened? I was so flattered. Like, I was so flat. I initially didn't want him. But then he said stuff like he he basically moved me into a zone where I was like, okay, fine. Like I'll give him a chance. I'll give him a chance. I, I found these little sneaky ghetto tactics really very attractive. I don't know. Uh first it was him saying that give your cousin my number to call me so I can convince her to basically leave that guy for me. And when he said that I was like <laughs> Ain't nobody ever said that to me. <laughs> I got giddy, but I let it go. All right. And then when well, my phone got lost, if only I'm awake, very entry level, boring phone got lost. I don't know what happened to it. Like when you party, sometimes phones go missing. Yeah. So uh, my phone went missing and this guy was still asking about me. I'm still in a relationship with a closet homosexual. All right. And I would leave him any day any day if at all a guy rocked up and convinced me you know that hey this is it because i wanted to be with a real man not a so measy that's gonna put a baby in my stomach and next thing years down the line i'm co-parenting like i'm palesa i'm sorry right uh, yeah type thing so i was prepared to leave this gay guy and i was gonna leave this gay guy but i just i was in a really I, I just wanted to be with someone plus i didn't hate this gay guy he was a friend of mine we were sort of we were close but there was no love because he was obviously in the closet like it was so clear mm. so for me it was like i'm not gonna leave my friend you know that i'm always spending my time with on the weekends that keeps me busy i don't hate him i don't dislike him i don't severely dislike him i don't find him disgusting i just find him gay <laughs> so i'm gonna hang out with my gay man <laughs> every weekend <laughs> i needed uh, however some like i needed I, I was in a time in my life where I had to be in a relationship like I just had to be in one I don't know if you would understand what I'm talking about as a woman the, like when you don't grow up validated or secure in yourself as a woman and when you don't grow up with the right kind of counsel advice you 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 feel once you start dating as a teenage girl going into your 20s that you basically need a guy to feel complete or whole or whatever such that you cannot be single I st from the moment I had my first boyfriend I could not be single I could not be single. I never had breaks between boyfriends. Like, I, it just never happened. I struggled with singlehood until Jesus enabled me for the first time in my life to be single. It's now, what, 12 years? But before I dated the first guy I ever dated as a Christian, I was single for two years. And I was never able to do that before. Because I always felt like I had to have a man. I, yeah. I could not leave this, this gay guy. Um, because I, what's, what am I going to do? Like what's gonna happen with me when i don't have a man uh, type establishment thing and this guy this ex of mine was basically saying so i'm all and come here then so i'm all and come here and that's exactly what happened <laughs> one minute <laughs> anyway anywho anyhow alrighty so my ex-boyfriend is trying to convince me to come through he's still asking about me do you understand and then my phone gets lost all right and with this phone of mine lost this guy is busy still asking my cousin what's going on with cousin Yao? like come on let her talk to me what's going on i also uh, was very intrigued by the pursuit like the fact that he kept pushing i i was flattered by it uh type thing and my cousin was like eh carabo cabelo is all up in my grow busy he keeps asking me about you and what have you and i'm like i suk i'm not interested besides i don't even have a phone you know i don't even have a phone that he can call me on type thing she goes and relays a message to him on some dude you and this thing with my cousin and as i can't just give you my cousin's number the first time she was like i can't give you her number if she doesn't want me to give you her number because then she's gonna feel bombarded by you she's going to feel disrespected by the lack of um respect for her uh, um her wishes one second i wanted to touch up my lipstick anyway she's going to feel bombarded by her by my disrespect of her wishes and come at me with a flying kick so i i gotta get her permission to give you her number she gotta approve it she gotta be cool with it you know so he was basically trying to get m me to a point where i would agree to make my to, to where i would agree for my cousin to give him my number right uh, yeah type thing but he kept on calling my cousin kept on tapping on the shoulder of my cousin he went out of his way to like basically ask my cousin your cousin your cousin he was he didn't even wait for my cousin like you know uh, waiting to bump into her somewhere and then being like so where's Carabo? what's going on he actively like was like he called her, asked for permission from the boyfriend can i call your girl so that i can get your girl to hook me up with her cousin and he kept pushing 
like he just he kept pushing so that's another thing that really got to me right it, it, it like massaged me a little bit it you know loosened my my ropes whatever it is that i was holding on to hard and fast it loosened them a little bit but then when i lost my phone that that's what took me over once and for all like that's what made me just pass away i literally just passed away i lost my phone and then my cousin when he called her he my cousin was like on top of that Lomuta gets on her phone she doesn't have a phone and so the only time that i'm able to contact her is if i call her on her mom's phone or if she calls me but otherwise she in and of herself is an unreachable human so woman to learn again her phone like she doesn't want to just accept embrace you know move on there are plenty of fishies in the ocean and my boyfriend was like what is this i'll ding him tell your cousin next time you talk to her that i'll buy her a phone and just so she so i can talk to her i'll buy her a phone just so i can talk to her and she doesn't even have to pay me back and she doesn't even have to be with me just so i can talk to her i'll buy her a new phone so i can talk to her and she don't gotta pay me back and she don't even have to agree to be with me she just gotta give me an opportunity to convince her to come and be with me instead of whoever she's with right now and when my cousin came and t told me that i was gone i was gone i was gone that was it i was like you're this guy but <laughs> i was so flattered you yes like it like it like yeah if i had no feelings for that guy on that day there was a fire in me i was like he said that for real <laughs> <laughs> i was so flattered yeah um but i still was like i that guy must relax Oof, oh desperate king kayana he's dead like dude, tell him to chill out with the desperado stunts but deep down inside low key i was like whoa that like this guy like what right so i started thinking about him like all the time meanwhile back at the ranch the gay guy hey yassi d1 that guy <laughs> will always be the, the most shocking exit relation like the exit out of a relationship that i've ever experienced like one time he came to my place and left his phone with me come mistake my mom's house where i was living and left his phone by mistake with me i don't even know who leaves their phone by mistake like a phone is just something that is always on you but nonetheless he left it with me by mistake right and um he called me on some babe my phone is with you please take care of it until next time i see you got public phone back before when there were still public phones uh, is that still a thing the container the public phone in cassis i don't know whatever i'm like fine i'll hold on to your phone here it is and i'm holding on to this phone right and before the battery dies a phone call comes through and i'm about to tell this phone call this individual has left their phone with me so please call them on their sister's phone or the mom's phone uh, because like this phone is with me for i don't know how long right uh yeah so i answer the phone to basically relay that message and there's some chick on the other side i was like lamont lana's gay was he's homosexual guys it's clear <laughs> he's got another girl <laughs> she was like let's say his name was rainbow <laughs> because he belonged to the rainbow community <laughs> they took our rainbow the rainbow belongs to jesus anyway whatever this guy rainbow uh, this chick is like rainbow ke monawaka ina ninge pregnant ke five months pregnant ke wana rainbow i was like what <laughs> i was like it i'm sorry this is my ticket i wasn't in love with that guy i was feeling guilty i i knew i was gonna leave him one day uh, but i you know he was my friend and i didn't want to hurt him uh but i like I, i wanted a way out somehow i answered the phone and some woman told me that rainbow is her man and that rainbow and that she's five months pregnant with rainbow's child i was like like proper what in the world he's gay like can you be so gay that in order to, so can you be so closeted as a gay man that you would hurt immediately with another woman just to prove that you can play women even though you're in the closet you know what convinced me that this guy was in the closet the fact that he was struggling in that regard if you know what i mean like he was struggling to arrive to uh, arise to the occasion if you know what i mean and at some point i thought oh, Buti, maybe i'm not attractive there was something wrong with the crank hey like i don't know what's going on but this guy his struggles were just like out of this world and over and above his struggles you know arriving to the occasion he also was very effeminate he had the mannerisms alongside struggling to get ready you know so i was like i know 
Minang busy, no, no, so busy. Keep busy, so busy, guys. Keep busy, so busy, my life thing. I was convinced I was so busy. He was in denial about it. He also told me that many people suspected him of it in his uh like life circle. They they suspected him of being in the closet, but not uh, yeah, but that he wasn't. He claimed that he was a completely hot-blooded heterosexual man, and yeah, type thing. And I'm like, hot-blooded heterosexual guy. I'm only like 21, so basically, I'm at the hottest I've ever been in my life right now and you can't see nothing hot about me in that regard ah guy how in the world you gonna make out with a woman for three hours and still not get there i'm sorry like no way <laughs> i was like that guy is in the closet he's in the closet and i was i was shocked out of my mind i was like you impregnated a woman umichi sita boy boy kanja ni when you struggle with me <laughs> This woman was like Rainbow Kimunaka. Rainbow is my is my husband, and and he is uh what is this? And I'm five months pregnant with his baby, and I was like, as in, I'm sorry, like I don't care if this is true or not. Bottom line is, I always want it out. I don't want to be with a man that I can't do what I need to do with, and on top of that, I don't want to be with a guy that is not attracted to me. I also don't want to be with a guy that I am suspicious of. Plus, I'm not in love, right? I was not in love with him, and the thing that made it impossible for me to love him was because he was so much like a girl. He was so effeminate. He was not masculine enough, and so it made it really hard for me to fall in love. Yeah, now he was a really cute guy, and that's what made me date him in the first place, but he was too much of a girl for me to fall in love with him. And so uh, when, when I got that phone call, I was like, <laughs> okay, you can keep your baby daddy girl like proper all the best in the future. I hope you have a healthy delivery. Uh, when he comes here to get his phone, I suppose I shall let him know that you called. Lo and behold, that same night he calls me and I'm like, girlfriend now in phone is it? I hope pregnant to five months sick. I want to know your girlfriend called me saying that she's five months pregnant with your baby. And he was like, oh, she's lying. She's lying. I was like, dude, it's fine. No need to argue. It's over. Uh, come get your phone when you're ready. But this is done. We're finished. Like, it's over. He was like, oh, I'm a baby. I'm a, I'm a baby. I'm a, I'm a baby. I was like, guy, it's over. Hi, I'm a baby. Hi, I'm a baby. Because he had these mannerisms and his voice was not even fully broken. Hi, I'm a baby. Hi, I'm a baby. Baby, come on. Come, baby, come on, man. You know you're my girl. Nah, chill. Dog, yeah, I am your girl. More like your bosom body BFF. But I'm not your girl. In that, you know, heterosexual romantic sense. I'm sorry. Bye. And lo and behold, this gay guy, when he came to fetch his phone, he was laughing at me and how angry I was at impregnating another woman. He ended up going on right ahead to put witchcraft on me and my future relationship and everything else that I would endure. But nonetheless, whatever I got out, I got out of that yeah situation. So after he pulled that stunt, because I wasn't severely broken, devastated, hurt, tormented by what happened with the gay guy, because I didn't love him. I wanted an excuse and he gave it to me. And I got to get... Do you understand oh no come on don't twitch don't twitch i wanted an excuse i wanted to get out and this dude gave me a perfect opportunity he opened up a window for me without feeling guilty for dumping a man that was you know you know faithful and didn't hurt me and didn't do anything to really just kind of crush my bones and yet i'm just dumping him just because i can yeah he eradicated that guilt from my doorstep he is the one that that made the first infraction and when he committed the first infraction i i, I fled i did not allow him an opportunity to apologize nothing because i was like this is my chance and indeed <laughs> he laughed at me like i was throwing my toys out the cot anyway whatever uh moving on he tried to come back because that's the thing about a closet homosexual the woman that they were able to get along with most and hang out with and so therefore have a convincing relationship with they will always try to come back to them and so as to convince the world that he's straight the one that he could really truly be a friend to a friend with instead of a real lover also plomana and just because she helps his acting along his emmy nomination is due thanks to her and i was helpful to this guy's oscar performance as being a straight guy i was not about to go giving some easy a baby realizing with your snap i'm pregnant by a man that likes men i know that was not gonna be my story so i knew that if i had forgiven him and continued with what i was doing with him he was going to continue to use me as an oscar performance and so i fled but i also fled thinking at the back of my mind about this guy that i'm crushing on this uh, persistent right that that is out there in these streets like trying to talk to me to help me understand why i gotta be with him and not the other guy i found that boldness that bravado that forceful woe i was very drawn to it i was attracted to it it was a pursuit and i loved it i loved that he pursued me so hotly and so effervescently 
and was so confident in so doing it as well to a point where I was like I'm sorry I, and again remember I was dating a closet homosexual this guy was a man my ex that is or that would ultimately be the five-year guy he was a man in a way that this other guy wasn't and I was robbed of a patriarchal true like you know presence in my life I was robbed of, of manhood because I was dating a closet homosexual for like eight to nine months and I was emptied or robbed from a man's voice, a man's ways, a man's walk, a man's insistence, a man who really wants a woman, like a woman, you know what I mean? And when my ex was pursuing me like that, I was like, it's been a drought up in this monster. It's a holy drag, kalahari. It's like, you know, when my ex rocked up, it's, it's like I was the equivalent of a girl that's been in an all girls boarding school and seen nothing but girls for like five years. And then next thing she moves, she goes to university and on campus, but I'm a daughter. It's like, whoa, Sanya, I went crazy. Because my ex was a man in a way that that other guy wasn't. And it worked in his favor. Coupled with how, how strongly he pursued me, no guy has ever pursued me like that before. Like the guy was five years, I guess that's why he lasted as long as he did in my life. No man has ever gone to such great lengths to get me, right? And so I finally cried this time around after I broke up with that guy. I contacted my cousin and I was like, Oh, since not busy early. I am all up in my girl trying to like holler at me. And she's like, yeah, yeah, he is. He's still trying to get with you. I was like, you can finally give him my number. At this stage, I had gotten a new phone myself. I did not, uh, what is this, insist that he buy me one. I bought my own phone and uh, um, with a new SIM card and everything. I was like, this is my, 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 my cousin knew my number. I'd done a SIM swap, right? Uh, I was like, you can give him my number. I bought a phone type thing. It's cool. And then he called me guys within like the same day, y'all. <laughs> The same day, he called me like the same day. He did not wait until the next day. I didn't wait three days for no. It's like my cousin delivered the message to him, and as soon as my cousin delivered the message, I got the call. <laughs> and we spoke all night. <laughs> we spoke all night. First date, spent all day together, and the rest is history from there. Fell hard and fast for him. He was able to convince me to come in. So initially, I didn't like him. I didn't want him for reasons that, frankly, I should have actually listened to my gut feeling concerning. But he was able to convince me. And that, that that's the difference between a man that rocks up, pursues you. Initially, you don't want him. But then he creates a very compelling argument. He makes it possible for you to see where he's coming from. My ex wore what I imagined a swagger. Like he, he intrigued me. He interested me. He created in me a desire for him. I found what he did fantastic. Like he was phenomenal. I loved it. Like... On I don't even know what word to use. Like, what is the English equivalent of the Kaza word? He had, I don't know, what in the world? I'm sorry, he convinced me. I don't know what Kaza is. He was impressive. That's it. He changed my mind. He was a Kaza guy. I found it to be incredibly vested with swagger, what he did. And so I thought it was cool. And then when we went on the first date, he was everything, I guess, I kind of needed. He was funny. He was all these things. He had many stories for days, and I can sit and listen to a person talk for like all day if they're very interesting. He had stories for days. He never had, we never ever had awkward silences. He knew how to hold his water, his conversation. Top of that, uh, what is this? Um, uh, he was the flower buying type, and that was my first time ever being with a guy like that. He was the flower, candy buying, romantic teddy bears type thing. Like, yeah, calling you all day, texting you all day. I was like, oh, what more do I need? So I was parched for a season, and then I entered into like, you know, a well-nourished, like, forest full of like fruits and vegetables and I was like I'm good like I'm chilling and I indeed chilled in there for five years but then he pulled a stunt he went awry ultimately but this story is not about my ex but I'm trying to help you understand the difference between a guy that you initially don't want and then he makes you see that actually he's very wantable he's actually desirable then you end up going in the sunset and marrying him versus a guy that you find disgusting the one at Vitz Mingimnyanya he was disgusting why was he disgusting because of how he pursued me first of all he kept on telling me he's got all this money <clears throat> He, he, not money, sorry, he didn't have money at the time, but he was talking about the prospects. I told you he, pull, he pulled out a whole value proposition, a whole business case for crying out loud. He hooked up like a whole marketing plan with financials in it to show me the net present value of what he is today. That while he might be a lowly university student right now, he is a financial graduate. He is a, a BSc financial mathematics um, 
near graduate that is going to be doing his honors next year and interning at some big company and he's going to be getting his first car then and then he's going to pay for everything make sure that my parents don't got to pay for my school fees my parents don't got to pay for my anything because he's going to be taking care of everything my parents are going to be maybe not school fees i mean goodness if you're interning at your first job if it's not school fees that you're paying but you know carry type thing whatever like if i want to buy steers at the matrix then i'm gonna go under heaven and buy uh, a wacky wednesday for myself and my girls type thing he was promising to basically make me or he was promising to end up who put my face <laughs> He was telling me that tomorrow he's gonna be put my lisa. And so because he's gonna be put my lisa, hey, I, I ought not pass him up. That was his initial um strategy. And I found it tactless that he was basically throwing money at me on some I don't care lady if you don't love me, but I can love you. It's like have you no regard for the fact that I don't want you? Why are you not just like with my ex-boyfriend that I just explained right now? Why aren't you trying to get me to love you? Why aren't you trying to get me to look at you with regard? Why aren't you trying to get me to see where you're coming from? Like charm the living daylights out of me. Convince me that I should be with you. Change the mind of a woman that was under normal circumstances, not even trying to holler at you. She was not even trying to look at you. But now I'm looking at you because what cars? There's something that you've done that has impressed me do that if at all a woman is not coming around don't tell her that you can buy her shoes don't tell her that you can you know uh, you can promise her a future do not do a value proposition a business case a hard knock with some financials forecast into the future that can convince her why are in the heaven she should be with you instead of you just putting your a game like your swagger the the game the thing that that you do like oh there, there was this guy for instance at vitz that i was very close friends with also ended up breaking my heart right uh he had a girlfriend uh, type establishment thing when i was with my ex at the same time but i ended up developing a low-key crush on him because he was in the beginning i didn't like him because he had an attitude he walked around like he defecated ice cream and like everybody stank yeah oh now yeah some congolese dude and i didn't like him at first but then we started working together in school on project assignments because we were strangely always in the same classes every single year uh anyway whatever and we got close we became really tight friends because of working together all the time and once we became friends then of course you know he stopped having so much attitude and became a little bit of a better human being uh, as a result and i this guy was such a gentleman just generally without even you being with him that he was a kind of dude to like you know buy all the ladies ferrero shares at the end of the year uh and uh, you know like pick you up even though he's a friend like a guy you, you know a guy that has a crush on you knows that you're not gonna be with him because you're with somebody else and does not therefore as a result of that pursue you but when you ask anything he flies from wherever he's at he could be in a different city and he will drive all the way from Limpopo to Johannesburg just to bail you out of something. He became that to me until I developed like a low-key crush on him. That's a guy that ultimately reveals his swagger for what it is in your girl. And if, if should he pursue you, you would say yes. But like there was a time when if he pursued you, you'd be like, no, I, you're just a friend. Let's like kids, you know, type setup thing. So I found to grow on me. That, that's the kind of person that grows on you. Thank you very much because he showed himself worth your while to gaze upon versus one that is promising you the sun the moon and the world to finance you and you don't gotta love him just let him be in your life random rubbish and unfortunately my poverty has subjugated me to the tyranny of men like those the one rock of it's not only gave me these rap sheets right but as time progressed because he kept on like this pursuit happened for something like three to four months guys every single day almost every day there were days when i did manage to escape from him right um and it got exhausting and it got so bad that i wanted to tell on him i wanted to go to the dean of the the maths faculty and talk to him on some one of your students is harassing me on campus and i'm scared now because i feel like one of the like he's, he might even rape me if he found me in a conspicuous enough space because of how he started to talk to me so he started out by first tabulating how successful he's gonna be in a minute to what he would do to me physically so he graduated from talking about money realizing that money is not going to work on me and then was like okay i'm gonna try a different strategy so i'm going to talk about my abilities in bed he started to describe to me things like i would be walking from wherever i'm at i get a guy i'm walking really fast he's literally running with me and he keeps on saying things to me that are so licentious lewd sexually just very provocative like you know rhetoric pornographic talk describing what he's going to do to what parts of my body and how and how he's going to use 
what parts of his body to do what to me and it was just so pornographic the description of what he was he would do that i felt like one day this guy could actually rape me if he finds me like i said in a conspicuous enough environment and some days i would leave school like gabo after six basically bordering on the sun setting i gotta walk to brie across mandela bridge to get to the taxi so i can get to volkhievo and sometimes by the time you get to the taxi rank it's kind of dark and there are exams that go with exams some of them you would write them since they would want to uh, they would set exams for students across different blocks sections right they we would write them after all lectures have finished so 5 or 45 it was possible for students at this to start writing an exam at the end of the day go flower hall or hall 29 or whatever at the end of a day guys and so chris as so a students that did not have their own cars or parents picking them up sometimes you would find them in their numbers bunching together to walk to breathe to taxi ranks basically busi hubo ka seven exam that starts at 5 45 ending at half past six and so you are literally on a mandela bridge when the sun is setting and you got a huanta thankfully it's downtown joburg so it's still quite busy and there are also employees at corporates around like liberty life staff whatever that are also using taxi so you're not alone and other students are also in the space but it's still dark and but however on campus on campus it's practically empty on campus it is practically empty people have gone to their residences if they live on campus or they've left they've gone home and so you could walk a whole stretch all by yourself as a woman until you get to the end to the outside where now it's bustling johannesburg and that is how this guy sometimes used to catch me and i was worried that if it gets dark enough after an exam go hall 20 especially go hall 29 which is all the way quite deep buried in east kokoko uh, west campus flower hall nearly better because you there was like an exit not far from it and you could be outside very quickly but hall 29 was like literally buried in like it was deep it was far and you had to walk quite a distance to get to any reasonable exit out of the university from out of hall 29 and if you're not walking with other students you would feel really out of place i, I, I felt so scared i felt so scared right um oh, because of that guy he would wait guys he would wait for me and find me and some days the sun was already setting especially girl winter i told you he did this for about a four month period and i i would feel like he's gonna rape me to a point where i wanted to report him to the school right to his faculty and and, and say like I, I like this guy i knew his name i didn't know his surname i was gonna use nothing but his name i knew that if i had asked for a student card to see his name and surname he would have been suspicious i was gonna report him on some one of your students is harassing me and he is speaking licentious things to me and i'm scared for my life please do something like discipline him or whatever but by the miracle of god somehow one day he just it just stopped one day it stopped he left me alone but i was on the verge of gumpaisa to the faculty it got there because he started to become very pornographic in his dis dis the, the um, descriptions of what under heaven it is that he was going to do to me physically that was a man that was desperate to be with a woman that did not want him and because it was because of his switch off conversation to a very pornographic tone that i then started to get very disgusted with him i was grossed out i was grossed out and i started to tell him leave me alone and one day he he he, he got to me so badly that i basically almost cried and i think that's what made him be like i let me move and then he left me alone right after four whole months of struggling with this but the pursuit was real it was alive and it was quite abusive do you understand what i'm saying and the same thing is currently right now still pursuing me now that i am in, in, on all of the squalor and i'm suffering i'm persecuted i got very perverted men who i consider to be lewd and licentious using the corobella and whatnot which is a very sexual uh, um suggestion corobella whenever you you as afflict a woman with corobella in dreams it will come forth as lust sexual attraction and in waking life you're gonna find yourself lusting after the person if at all the spell is catching on you that that has done this to you it does not inspire love i don't know how many times i can say this the devil cannot manufacture love only god so corobella does not bring love into an ecosystem it brings lust it makes you sexually attracted to somebody so when you see it for what it is it is literally like a sexual attack it is a sexual um abuse it is like somebody shallowing you by telling you what they're going to do to your body using what parts of their bodies what they're going to use their tongue to do to what part of you yeah that's how that guy used to talk to me and in my dreams i see that kind of imagery where there's a lot of sexual activity and trying to convince me to be with someone because that's what corobella is it's lust and so when you pursue a woman that heavily with that level of sexual abuse on that day you are a rapist in the making 
and you are of course unapproved by god because you're walking in licentiousness and sensuality and you are also trying to cause a woman to fornicate with the heart which is something that god considers a sin you are showing her pornographic images that she has not signed up for given that she's dreaming them and not actually clicking on the triple x site you are you are forcing a woman to see sexual value in you that is not attracted to you and on that day you become disgusting and when a woman is that grossed out by you and you still tell her but i'll protect you i'll buy you a house i'll buy you shoes i'll spend ten thousand rands on you in a day you know you have everything you want and you expect a woman to fall in love with you that thinks that you're basically hannibal lecter you're jack the ripper you are ted bundy you're moses the toll to her you are a creep of prolific proportions with a sexual perversion and yet you think that one day is going to arrive when you're going to flip her and change her mind where you're concerned that is the kind of stuff that cults are made out of where men men so desperately desire a woman that they will promise the sun and the moon to her insofar as she will agree to be with him even if he does not love her it's cultic it's cultic and it is sinful against god and it breaks the heart of god it grieves him concerning his daughters because he cares that we should reciproc be reciprocal in love he cares that we should be mutually involved with somebody that we also desperately want to love instead of it being one way and us cringing every time our husbands kiss us uh, you know when you see his naked body you just want to vomit you can't stomach you you feel good when you come home and he's sleeping and snoring on the couch because it means you don't have to talk to him it means you don't have to humor him it means you don't have to kiss him but the moment he wakes up you're like oh when he's turning around like a door turning on its hinges in bed you're like oh goodness what if he wants to do whatever and you just are like very unhappy and you're always on the phone next to him in bed after the deed because of the fact that i'll what we get there and your thoughts are like far away i'm sorry like i don't want that i know what it's like to be with a man that i don't love that i cannot be intimate with with any level of ease and i didn't even dislike him i just was disquieted by his gayness he was in the closet one the, the first no no he wasn't the first there was another guy that i dated that i didn't like but it never got to relations if you know what i mean type thing but I've, there was only one guy that i had never had any passion for in my heart that i got to a point of having relations with and oh goodness it was heavy and then that, I, like i said i did not i did not hate this guy i didn't dislike him i just knew that i was wasting my time with a gay man so now when you add absolute abhorrence hatred disgust that just makes it a new game altogether i could hang out with my gay ex because he was good people's but for the fact that he was in the closet and i was straight and he was gay but these guys i don't even like them i find them disgusting so it, 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 it adds a new nuance a new facet to this whole discussion it's a disgusting grieving thing guys let me move into the next part i'm knowing our way into my exercise time now so let me do the final part to seal this conversation that women might be edified uh to basically spot this for what it is and also for whatever men might feel like it's 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 enough nj to drag a woman through the mud in a relationship that they don't want to be in but you're paying their way you are selfish you are a narcissist on that day you should leave her alone you are a human being made in the image of god that some other woman will love like a fat kid loves cake allow yourself to be in a marriage with a woman that is reciprocating because then on that day everybody is mutually happy because if you are not insistent on your wife's happiness you are not a man of god you are not loving a woman the way that christ loved the church is that basic